everything had gone through. And um, I finally was able to speak with Laura at the health department on Friday of last week. And she told me that no one from Action Target had actually ever reached out to her, that they um, had misled me as far as their uh, their action, their actions with the health department. Um, but like I said, uh, since we were able to switch our, our contact and our project manager, manager over there, we are seeing some swift action now. Uh, so fingers crossed that th this is a move in the right direction. So we still do not have a, a work continuing CO or, or are we still doing some work there without the C? I mean, uh, not a CO. So, yeah, so um, we we have had to stop work at the at the health at the PD. Um, we got too far along. Uh, without being able, without having a permit, so the building department did did stop us. Uh, however, we've also uh, been able to connect with Christopher Baldwin, and he's helping us out with the fire marshal as well. Uh, he gave us uh, the opportunity today for for Downs to submit some of their subcontractor information, so that Downs will be able to continue their scope of work. Uh, without the action target uh, components and the health department components for the action target makeup air unit being submitted. So would that be just like a separate permit or is it just? Yeah, yeah, okay. it's gonna, I think it's gonna be an entirely separate permit from what, uh, from uh, Christopher Baldwin's email. Um, Kevin, I don't know if you've had any more contact with him, if you know anything different, but it, that's what it, my interpretation is that it'll be a separate permit. No, I haven't had any contact of them. Um, I just, I, I responded to your initial email to me and Anthony with um, the documentation for the fire sprinkler permit. And, um, you know, I sent the contract specs and the, the drawings uh, at his request. And um, I, I told all of our subcontractors to, you know, go ahead and pull their permit. So um, that's kind of where we're at with the permits. So it sounds like it would be sort of separating out the down scope of work under permits, and then ATI would have to have a permit for their scope. So that would allow exactly. us to, yeah, so that would allow us to continue work. Exactly. So it just, just like we always knew, uh, uh, action targets, mechanical contractor performance, is going to need to pull their own permit. That was always part of it. Um, right. But it's just now with the town, it's it's separated out rather than being one umbrella. Okay. So, um, and where are we with the um, installation of the Unistruts? So the Unistrut... Um... <clears throat> The uh, the steel contractor that we that we hired, uh, they had their engineer review, like the 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 loads that were provided by Action Target, and they told us that um, there was not enough embedment of the uh, the ceiling planks to do like a um, like a drill and embedment. So we found a detail from the uh, the precast manufacturer for a through bolt design. Um, so that detail is with the engineer right now to review and figure out what we need for spacing because the original intent just wouldn't work. So that's kind of where we're at right now. And I see I see that we have Mark Allen on. I don't know, Mark, if you have any update on that. Uh, not really. Um, we obviously uh, try to, you know, a solution that's going to accomplish the task at the at the lowest cost for the for the town's benefit. Um, the uh, the planks are certainly capable of supporting the load. It's just how the uh, the the baffles are connecting to the plank that's the issue. Uh, and we feel confident the this new solution is is going to be acceptable. It looks like it. Probably will be at a little higher cost, but uh, 
ultimately, I think this is going to be a successful solution. Yeah, so the engineer did l let us know that the planks will support the weight of the action target equipment. It's just, as Mark said, it's the embedment method of drilling and like inst installing um like, like an embedment from below, it just, it's not going to work. So we have to go through like a, a through bolt method with like a plate and threaded rod from above. So uh, that would require like a roofer to kind of open up the roof membrane, install the threaded rod with plate and then patch it over. Is that so do we, do we know the number or? No, I I don't have the, uh, the spacing yet. So that's what we're waiting on to figure out how many, locations we need is it going to make sense to patch versus doing an entirely new membrane no yeah it doesn't make sense to do a new new membrane i mean it's okay. it's it's i think only like five years old and um you know we we deal with greenwood who was the original contractor a lot so i feel confident that we can get them on board and um you know get this taken care of in like a timely manner yes Roy, you had a question. It's a question. Has that been reviewed with Brian, or is Brian part of this also? So we we sent an RFI to uh, Jakomsky Humes to let him know of the situation, and uh, Mark did respond. I, I don't know if Brian has any, any input. I mean, I'll I'll relay to Mark for that. Yeah, uh, Brian is aware of the issue. Oh. Does he have any other solutions though? Because I. I think we're trying to avoid this, you know, going through. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's why our initial solution did not have a roof penetration. Obviously, you know, when you start making holes in the roof, it's you know, it's a slightly bigger risk. But uh, this membrane that's on the roof uh, can be readily patched, and and with a with a competent roofer, should not be an issue. So, so what are we waiting for as far as uh, we're, we still need the um, so, steel installers engineer to? Yes. So right now, right now it's with the engineers uh, to figure out what the spacing requirement is. And they, they need to just kind of review their initial uh, number and, you know, we'll, we'll have to figure out if, there, if there's any additional impact, you know, if, if so, we'll have to, you know, discuss with the seal contractor, um, and then we'll have to submit the engineer chop drawings for review. And they have their material, like the Unistra, already on hand and everything. It's just a matter of how they're hanging it from the ceiling. And will that, you know, when they come up with their proposed solution, um, will uh, Chukunsky Humes have to weigh in on that? Yeah, it, it'll, it'll be a delegated design. I mean, their engineer will provide calcs and stamp it. I, I think it'll just be a, um, um, like a peer review for Jacobsky Humes to, I guess, acknowledge that, you know, our, the engineer reviewed it and everything's looks okay. And them being the architect of record, they're just kind of acknowledging it. Okay. Um, so we... Evan, or, another question, go ahead. Did, did we not have a, de, a design with the first uh, go around with when we had it? Yes, so we, we did. Change order? Well, um, the only, well the, go ahead, Kevin. The there was only, a design. The only information that we had in the documents was the, um, the spacing and the weights of action targets equipment. Uh, we, we didn't have any kind of detail for um like embedding into the original uh like the, the ceiling planks we had like it was just one standard detail from action target with a unistrut but as far as how that unistrut got fastened to the structure above was kind of an unknown so then how did if it was an unknown how did the change order get put together if for the change order we approved uh, how was that determined if it was an unknown? It was the, um, I don't want to say the easiest install method, but it was what they 
assumed would be the uh, you know the the engineering acceptable method of being able to drill and install from the ceiling. I mean, instead of building like a frame inside or drilling through the uh, the roof and having to patch it, that, I think that was just the path of least resistance of what they assumed when they figured being able to install the unit strut. Because typically, if you have enough material, it shouldn't be a problem to install unit strut uh, directly to the structure above. Because the load is kind of spread out all yeah, over. Yeah, so yeah, right. So the, the loads are just too much and there's just not enough material on these precast panels to accomplish what they originally intended as the install. When you say However, that material, you're talking about the the thickness of yes, the thickness. So yeah, so the bot the bottom of so these are hollow, these are hollow um like panels. There's yes. um, you know, they're and so the the bottom flange, if you will, is only like an inch thick. They're overall they're eight... we... go ahead. No, I was just gonna say like overall the planks are eight inches thick, and like the, the bottom between like the hollow spot and, and the bottom of the precast panel is only like an inch. So there's just not enough material to embed an anchor. I thought we had presented that question to Jakunski Hume months ago, saying because when I think it was when Downs was looking for um, contractors to do it, and some of the contractors saying, "Oh, this isn't yes. going to work." Yeah. So was it, um, wasn't it I, verified that it was going to work? That's that's what Brian said. I think the the first go around was exactly that, Nancy, and I think it was just yes. Yeah, uh, it was a conversation between myself, Brian, and Anthony. And yeah, Brian did tell us that uh, that the design was going to work. Yes, because that was the the whole issue with the Unistrap being so much more expensive was, or even getting people interested in it, was because uh, the subcontractors were uh, questioning whether or not the design yeah. would work. So uh, during the bidding process, uh, Anthony, Brian, and I all got on the call and. Uh, Brian reassured us that the detail would work. So, so I haven't, it, you know, I was wondering if you could research with Brian one more time. It, it sounds like we're just, you know, arbitrarily drilling up, a, you know, maybe it's going to hit part of the core area, and that's where they're saying it's not going to work. But, you know, this the spacing is, is it's all on the plans to, to what they are. If that's hit in the concrete webbing of that, would that make Make the difference. I, I mean, I. It sounds like they might be just saying, you know, not knowing where where those hilty bolts are or whatever type fastener they're using could be hitting the core area, you know, versus versus the hollow areas. You know, I, I I just would like us to research it before we start boring holes through the roof. I don't disagree. I think you can patch the roof, but I'd rather not. So, Kevin, I, I don't know if you had that conversation with your subcontractor. If at that web, where uh, you imagine using some type of spread anchor in the original detail, if there was even enough material there, or if we're worried about cracking into the the cavity, if we tried to put a spread anchor in the uh, into that kind of web area. So the, the way the way they explained it to me is that based on the length of the run, so you, I think it's like a forty foot run, you have a variance of like a quarter inch, um, being able to like, you know, hit the anchor or like where it needs to be, like in the entire run. They just feasibility wise, they just said it's it's not really feasible. I mean, we can we can ask them again, but again, I mean, their engineer reviewed. And they they told them that uh, you know that this isn't gonna work the original well, method. I, you know, I would appreciate if you could just talk with Brian on that because you know the the conversation that we had gotten back, Brian was okay with that. So it just seems like we're getting conflicting stories. Well, I I think to speak to that, I think if you if you imagine. Uh, if, a, if a piece of Unistrut is installed the way that we have indicated and you're suspending like um, a length of two by four from that, I think everybody could reasonably 
assume that that two by four could be well supported by that system. The difference is at some point, you're gonna to get to a weight that is not gonna be able to be supported uh, you know, by that system. So, so the, the delegated design is trying to determine where that limit is. And when the <clears throat> engineer ran those calculations, he's determined that, that uh, the weight that we're trying to support is too much for that type of design. And that's, that's what we've always intended is for the installer to, to issue a delegated design and to, take, uh, and to take responsibility for that design. Just so just so yeah, are you guys in the room there? Mark Allen is Jakonski Humes. Yes. Because I'm just concerned what you know, ending up with another change order. I'm, in fact, two additional change orders on this because we're going to have real thing, and we're going to also have a change to the to the uh, metal. Right, and I think that going back to you know the initial design and what was specified in the questions that were asked, everybody was confident that it was going to work the way. Yeah, that's. So how here we are now it's not going to work. So right. That's what's been borne out by the engineering calculations. We're not going to, you know, we don't want to put forth a design and, and force the installer to, to install our design if he thinks it's not going to work. And that's, that's why this is set up like this. He's, uh, he's looked at it and he says it's not going to work the way that we thought it was going to work and that he has come up with an alternate solution that he he is going to stand behind. And I think that's what you want. Yeah, we'd like that with no additional cost. <laughs> well, we would all like it for no additional cost, but I, I think we need to accomplish the scope of work. And I, I don't think the... You know, I think the town of Bethel, you know, should pay for the scope of work they get. Yeah, I think I think what we have to find out from the when, when the engineer finishes their drawn up, if we pay for the plans to be drawn up, and they're not right. So no, that's that's not that's not true. It has never been our responsibility to design the connection of the of the baffles to the structure. That's never been in our, our design. Well, when you, when you guys built the, the building, it was built to be a range. So I would assume you would communicate with. That's correct. And our, and our structural engineer has ensured that the planks can hold up the baffles and they can. It's just the nature of the connection of the baffles to the, to the uh, structure. So does our change order to the uh, subcontractor include an approved design? It, it, inclu it includes it includes engineering for the design. And, and then, uh, Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that the new design that the engineer is working on right now is we're looking at would be less labor intensive than the previous where it was going to require more drilling more holes more anchors yeah i mean that, that that's that's something that i think you know downs and our subcontractor can work out i mean yeah i mean depending on the spacing um yeah it, it could be less drilling um but now there's like work above you know up on the rooftop which again i mean it's it's not that big of a deal. So again, I mean, like, I, I don't want to go uh, like DEF CON 1 on this right yet. Um, we're still waiting on the engineer to pro provide the response. And for all I know, it could be it could be like half of the embeds that were, were originally required. So um, I mean, once we get that information, we can evaluate like where we are versus like where we were. And do we have a time frame on when they say that they'll be able to get you that design? I was told this morning that I should see something by end of business tomorrow. So hopefully by Friday morning is kind of what I'm hoping for. Hey, Kevin. When, yes. When, when your 
we're doing that, can you also uh, check with them? But the one, the one thing that I, I really would not like to see is a hole every two feet, whatever it might be. So maybe it's going to entail a heavier unit strut or whatever it might be, so that we can space them better or whatever it might be. So yep. understood. Keep that in mind as as you're as you're going through. Okay. And uh, Evan, where are we with the MAU? So the MAU, uh, like we said, um, with the new PM uh, on board from Action Target, um, I, when I gave them the priorities, I told them that the health department was priority number one. Uh, the MAU would be priority number two uh, because um, you know we don't need them to come out to site until Kevin is ready for them. Um, so we're uh, still waiting to hear back from, from Brian regarding that. So with the, um, the email that went out late this afternoon from Laura, and she did have a conversation with Action Target, but she's also looking for, um, Action Target's responsible for installation. They're not responsible for maintenance, et cetera. However, the police department had discussed with and had a plan for um, a regular maintenance, I don't know if it kind of situation with action target so that um, everything that needed to be taken care of, of getting rid of hazardous materials, et cetera. Yeah, so, uh, unfortunately, I, I think that Brian might not still be fully up to speed on all the conversations okay. that happened. And also right. we got the news that Rex, the salesman, has also left Action Target. So a lot of information and history with the project was lost with him leaving the the, pro, the, the company. Um, so I was I was uh, going to forward this email to Lieutenant Durkin and ask him if you know he recalled any any plans for Action Target to continue with the maintenance plan. Um, and you know, continue the conversation that way, because I don't know, Lieutenant Durkin, if you've had any direct conversations with them, if it was more uh, Lieutenant L Libertini uh, or somebody else in your department. But I do remember that there were mentions of Action Target doing a continuing maintenance plan. Yes, I recall Lieutenant Libertini saying that. So he's had the direct contact with Action Target. I've never had any contact with them. So I'll, I'll forward that email to you, um, if you could give me a response and I could use that to help uh, help our new PM over at Action Target to you know, dig into the project history and, and help us out. Yeah, so that was one of the first um, first meetings. Not, Go ahead. You're saying now that they're not gonna be doing the maintenance? No, 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 that's not what he's saying. Okay. We, well, that was one of the first meetings we had kicking yeah. off the whole thing with, it was, um, me, Geraldine, Lieutenant Libertini, I don't know if Lieutenant Durkin, you were there, Pugner, um, Mark Allen, I think was there, several people, and just sort of, it was a while ago, pre coming up with costs and pre referendum. But there was a whole long discussion. Rex, Rex actually was there in person uh, about the whole maintenance situation and that all depending on the, the usage. And so if you were using it, every day for three hours a day, it would be different maintenance situation than if you're using it week. And, right. and there was a plan I think that was proposed, not as part of a cost to this project, but as something that you would have to look forward into the future, having it part be part of your own budget, et cetera. Right. Yeah. I don't know if there are minutes from that meeting, but. They would be in some Gerald and STV archive if there are. So yeah, I could call Gerald and as well tomorrow. I'll, I'll okay. See if she has anything. Yeah. Hey, Evan, yep. they, was everything anything ever discussed also about a payment issue with then dropping the HVAC in place or? So yeah, so I have been sending. Uh, this new gentleman, Brian Sanders, um, you know, all of my emails that I've had with uh, 
the previous PM and the billing department over at Action Target, so that he's able to get up to speed on everything. Uh, and one of those groups of emails was regarding the agreement that we had about uh, dropping the unit for the one hundred sixty nine thousand uh, dollar number. Um, but again, I, I in hopes of getting him on boarded quickly. I kind of get, gave him priorities, and I, I gave the the health department and getting the permit set away as priority number one, and the uh, MAU being below that. Um, just because, as a, as we're seeing, you know, the the space isn't really ready for that yet, so we could hold off on that. Okay. Is there anything else from you, Evan, or anything that questions that anybody has? Um, I I just I did have a, a question for uh, Kevin regarding. Um, uh, Christopher Baldwin's request for the HVAC. Uh, uh, your 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 portion of the HVAC documentation from your subcontractor um, was because they said they needed to sign off by the mechanical engineer of record. Does that need to come from from Mark's office or the or his consultants? Yeah, I wasn't really clear what he was looking for. I mean, we we have, I mean, there's nothing really engineered about what we're installing. It's just a couple of split units. So, um, I mean, it's not like it's a, um, like a, a sprinkler permit where there's, you know, calculations associated with it. So, um, I sent the, you know, the, the contract documents to Chris Right. Um, I mean, when our mechanical contractor pulls their permit, I, I would imagine they'd be able to provide whatever Chris is looking for. Um, but I don't know if anything is required from uh, Kohler Ronan. I mean, they provided, I mean, the, the contract documents are from Kohler Ronan as far as like the, the mechanical side. So beyond that, I don't, I don't know what Chris would be looking for. Okay. I'll I'll try and connect with him again tomorrow morning and make sure that he's he's all set. And, okay. Yeah. Uh, let me know if uh, if he needs anything. Yeah. Anything else from anyone? Thank you, Evan, for um, pushing on Action Target to get us someone new involved, and also so we can move along because we were pretty much stalled. Okay, so I think you sent out some. Invoices. I did, yes. Um, let's see. So first so the up, STV, there's a there's a couple STV ones. Right. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, so STV. Um, can we do the one that's we have to approve a different amount? Oh uh, yeah, because that's the that's the first one actually. That's even though it's supposed to be for the month of August, they actually included July in it, and that's right. incorrect. So, and it's that's a different it's a different amount. It's the the, the amount originally was um so it's invoice nine zero zero two eight eight three five. Which I think you had sent out last month, or yeah. Oh, that one. Uh, nope. Nope. So. I'll explain kind of where we are while Evan's trying to find it and put it up there. Um, this invoice, which was dated uh, September 14th, was for the month of August. And so the amount of it, Evan, is um, $4,644. Okay. 
and it looked like too much for me. And then we got an email, we, we held off on it and we got an email from billing department. And then also from uh, Angela Cahill, who's Evan's um, supervisor, asking us to approve the invoice for, for the lesser amount. So they, what they did was they included, and I don't have it electronically, so I can't put it up on the screen, but it included two months. Even though we had paid the one month, we paid the month of Ju um, July. And that's recorded in STV's finance department, et cetera. They just somehow billed for the month of July and the month of August. So can you find it or not? Uh, I cannot. Where is it? If it would, unless you never sent it out because we were at, we had asked. So, 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 yeah, more I, yeah, I sent it. Yeah. We had asked STV, billing department, finance, whatever, accounting, to issue a new invoice. And they said that it would take too long and, um, could we just approve an amount, approve the actual amount? So it's minus the month of July. And it might be in the August documents. If you have like, if you have access to the Zoom documents. Yeah. Unless you, unless you never, unless you never sent it out. So people there in the room, do you need to see this or can I, is my explanation going to be enough? But it, it, wasn't that the one where they asked you just to mark it up and you didn't want to do that? They were going to rebuild it? Yes. Right. So Evan and I didn't like the idea of doing the cross. Cause I think I did explain that at one other meeting. Yeah. Evan and I didn't like the idea of crossing everything out. And then they said, well, that's okay. We don't mind. So I did, I crossed stuff out and I just have the paper I don't have an electronic. I didn't scan a copy. Um, so we figured we'd give it a try. And if finance doesn't like it, then we'll have to go back to STV and ask for another invoice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a motion. And that way we can continue to discuss. I will make a motion that we approve STV invoice number 9002835, dated uh, September 14th, 2023 for the month of August, 2023, in the amount of $1,720. So I got a second from somebody. Can you read a couple of people? Cut out. So repeat, which do you need me to repeat? The amount. $1,720. One seven two zero. Thank you. Which is significantly less than the 4,600 that which sounded like a lot to me, sounded like a lot to Evan, and when we, we checked into it, found that it. So I've crossed things off. I've marked the um, 1,720 on here. I wrote a note to finance. So we figured it would be okay to go ahead and do it. And Evan, maybe you never sent it out because we were questioning it. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I sent out the other one. Yeah. I sent out the uh, 9072. Not the other one. You're right. Okay. Yeah. So, does anybody have any questions on this, or do you need to see a? Oh. uh was right. So, progress payments anyway. The next one, right? So, it's balance of contract. All right. So, any questions on it? Anything else we need to know? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Done. So then the next one is nine zero zero two nine zero seven two. That one, yes. So this one's for the month of September. So I'll make a motion that we approve STV invoice number nine zero zero two nine zero seven two, dated uh, October 12, twenty three, for the month of September. 
her in the amount of three thousand five hundred and twenty six dollars. Second. Dave Olson second. Any questions? So I did check this the back ground on this and it's fine. It's not any double billing, et cetera. So turn um, to date and everything now correct. So that's a good question, Evan, is um, if the earned to date on the previous one included sort of a double billing for um, July and August, would the earned to date be different? So that's something you're going to have to check into. And I, I can email Angela and include you, and then hopefully you'll deal with your... Yeah. Yeah. But that's a good point. Thank you. And there is another one, but I don't know if it came in in time to go. Did you send it out to people? I did, yeah. All right. I don't have that one, so I'll have to print it or something like that. Um, mm. Because we're doing catch up in a way with, I think, because we had held the other invoices because we were questioning them. All right. So I'll make a motion that we improve, approve invoice, STV invoice number 90029-29264, dated November 6, 2023, for the month of October in the amount of $2,666. Okay. David Olson, second. Any other questions on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Good. So, Evan, do you have any others? Uh, not for STV. I do have um, Downs Constructions requisition for the month of October and PCO number two. Okay. So, the payment requisition would be done separately. The um, change order we'd have to discuss. So we're going to first? Yeah, let's start with the change order. Um, okay. So this, uh, I, I don't know, Kevin, do you, do you want to explain this? Sure. Um, so our electrician was on site doing rough and this was uh, back in like late December, um, like September, October. And part of their scope of work was to install a uh, a new receptacle for um, a uh, like a like a piece of vacuum equipment they use like you know um, vacuum the range. Um, so that like that was part of their scope of work. And the original documents called for like a number twelve uh, conductor wire, and um, they they asked the question. They asked the RFI. Uh, they they thought that it was an undersized conductor. And the engineer confirmed that uh, they they said it was undersized. So um, we had to upsize the, the wire for this added receptacle. And there was a, an existing um, conduit run with a wire and uh, like a junction box from the original project that had the same wire size. It was the number 12 wire and that was undersized as well. So the, the crux of this uh, PCO was to upsize the, the wires for these two outlets. So I don't okay. know if you guys can all read the, the, um, the text there, but it does say that there was a credit provided for the originally specified wire. Yes, and yes. So just they did, the, yeah, they, they just did the credit operate. back the original equipment. So... so so there's credit back, but then there's a, also an increase, which yes, yeah, so, so yeah, this... there's an increase, right, for the uh, the increased wire size, and because they went up in the wire size, they had to also go up in kind of a size, so they went from three quarter inch to one inch. Okay, so to discuss further, I'll make a motion uh, to that we um, accept Downs change order proposal number two. Dated uh, October 3, 2023, for a change in the electrical, the size of the electrical wiring in the amount of 
$3,798.26. How much wire is that for $3,000? So first of all, you gotta I gotta have a second, then we can discuss. I'll second it. Second. Thank you. All right. So go ahead, John. How for three thousand dollars? How much wire is it? So if if you scroll down, I don't know who has control of the screen, but if you scroll down, there's backup. Um, so this is a a home run circuit. So it goes back to the the panel, which is on the other side of the um the the PD. Oh, so and this is keep scrolling down. Uh, next page, next page. So the next page has the breakdown of um, the quantity. So so did this piece of equipment change from the design? No, so the, the piece of equipment didn't change, but um, the original wire size, they questioned it if it was going to be large enough for a 30 amp breaker and um the response was to upsize it to a number 10. that sounds like a mistake to me uh, yeah I, I guess that's my question so they had the they had the equipment load and they designed it but the design doesn't work uh yes maybe they should eat that cost good um i mean that's we, I mean, we, we follow plans and specs and the, the, I mean, the plans called out like a, a, a certain wire size and that's how these guys, you know, bid the job. Um, well, but it was, it, Kevin, it was, it was designed by the engineer, correct? Yes. So is this a change in the scope of work? Yeah, this is a change in scope of work. So the original scope, though, was incorrect. Yes. Because of a mistake. Yes. So Mark, I don't know if you're still on, if you get... Speak yeah, to I mean, Cole Mark, Ronin. If you can weigh in on this, I mean, yeah, this, was, this was Cole Ronin's design. This is a Cole Ronin calculation. I don't know um, if you could speak to it. The uh, the equipment that we were provided uh, is a standard trap vacuum from Action Target, um, and we sized the wire for that piece of equipment. Now, in all the equipment packages provided by Action Target, I've not seen a revised trap back, you know, provided. So, you know, the fact that, you know, it doesn't, the equipment that they're going to provide is not appropriate for this wire size is, is something that we were not informed of. Is is that a bigger back than what was originally spec? Well, I've not seen whatever they're providing, so that is not something I can comment on. And Kevin, correct me if, if I'm wrong. Uh, we, it doesn't sound like the equipment changed. It sounded like what the requirement requested by the engineer is not compatible to the equipment. Well, so part of the scope was to change. There was originally a 20 amp breaker that was upsized to a 30 amp. So I mean, based on, the, on that information and the length of the run, that's why the, uh, the electrician asked the question. Uh, I, I don't know what piece of equipment action target is providing, but their, their question was just based on, the size of the breaker and in the length of the run all right so basically what they're saying is is to change the breaker that that runs too far for the size wire that there uh was specified correct but that's what's needed to run a piece of equipment correct so it was originally 20 amps so we had to upsize to a 30. i mean that was that was part of the original scope but because we were upsizing to the 
the 30 amp, uh, the wire size remained the same. So that's why they asked the question. Yeah, which makes sense. So yep. the end of it really is, is, is the design was incorrect. Yeah, I guess they, I guess we didn't have all the information or the design team didn't have all the information to. And it was because it was an existing wire that was from five years ago. Yeah, so it was installed during the, the original construction of the police station. All right, so where do we go with this? No, I think oh, we right. I think we got to move it move it forward. Yeah. We have a choice. Yeah. Okay. Got to happen. We got to get it done. You know, it was. And in, the, in the in the budget that I I gave last meeting, where I mentioned our leftover contingency amount, I had already included this in that number. So the, that contingency number that I gave last meeting would not be going down this amount. It remains the same. Okay. So are we ready to vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is anybody opposed? Okay. What what's going on? I gotta be able I gotta be able to hear. Can are we, we set or expecting more of these surprises? I mean, you know, it seems like we're starting to get three thousand, two thousand, five thousand dollars of death here. And, and you know, I, I'm just having I'm just having flashbacks from the original building, and all of a sudden we're starting to get these change orders because this was overlooked, this was forgotten, and we ended up taking a bath. And I, I don't want to be negative Nancy, but damn it, I don't want to go through this again. This is, you know. So, so Kevin, where where you are uh, before you, we were uh, given a stop work order with the scope of work that you have left, are there any other areas that you foresee there being RFIs or uh, potential PCOs? No, the only, uh, I don't want to say unknown, but um, so part of this, part of the contract was uh, we, we need to provide a pathway to the, uh, the door into the range because there's, I guess, some uh, card access that's being installed by the town's um, contractor. So the only question we have, or I, I could foresee is the pathway of like where, where we need to bring the pathway from like the door to where. That's okay. the only thing I can foresee. But my, so my electrician got... has my electrician hasn't brought it up yet. There, but if, what's that? If I got somebody from ESC out there to uh, help you guys lay out that. A, if you give me a contact for uh, yeah. ESC, uh, that would be fantastic. Yeah, will do. Okay. So, so we did the vote and the, and the motion passed to ch accept the change order. Yes. 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 Okay. And John's basically asking what more surprises are we going to get? It's a building project. There's going to be more surprises. Let's try to anticipate as best we can so we don't get stuck. All right. So do you have any other invoices? Oh, you have the downs application for payment. Right. So, and is there a copy of this that exists with the stamp on it? Or is this, oh, it's signed by the notary person. Okay. All right, so I will make a motion that we approve Downs application for payment number two for the period up to uh, October 31, 2023 in the amount of $77,457.11. Second. David Olson, David Olson seconds. Any 
questions, comments, etc. What does that leave? I, I can't see it as as far as a balance. What is it? Two twenty. That better. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, just my own curiosity. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Done. So that's what all you have, right, Evan? That is correct. So yesterday when I was at the municipal center, I picked up some other invoices, one of which is from Chukunsky Humes, which I didn't get to. I got to scan it and send it to you so that we can include it. So we can't do it this time because it wasn't in the documents. So I'll do that so we can include it in the next um, uh, go round. So it's just a partial payment on um, construction administration. So I'll scan that and send it to you. I think that might be it on the range. Does anybody have any other questions, comments, et cetera? Does Evan have anything? Kevin, do you have anything? Mark, do you have anything? So I'll just keep everyone abreast of where we stand with the engineer when I hear back from hopefully by Friday. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So we can move on. Yes. Thank you. Uh, um, one, two, three, four. So next on the agenda is the schools. The only outstanding, well, two outstanding things. One is the audit, but there's no news on that. Um, Dr. Carver will let us know uh, when there is. And then um, the level spreader and what's going on with Sunburst finishing up, burying stuff that needs to get buried, et cetera. So uh, I spoke to Pete today. He wants to go out there, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday. I believe that's the 18th. Okay. Yeah, sounds um, so I said, as soon as you know, that's the date you're going to go out. Uh, even though it's you know, not a school day, let's just make sure that everybody knows. Because uh, I don't know if they're soccer games or, or anything going on there that we should you know, just make people aware of. Right. So if he's going to, if he's definite about it, we should probably let Park go or. Yeah. And so can you confirm with him or should I? Yeah. Park so he's, he's confirming it now. Uh, he he said right. that's his plan, but he do, just does not have his guys 100% confirmed yet. I imagine they all want to take off after Thanksgiving. So they're going to, that's why they're putting the Saturday before. Okay. I will actually just kind of alert Park and Rec saying it's a potential. They have to deliver materials, yes? Yeah. Ho hopefully they can do that early in the morning and then come in the back way with the equipment, et cetera. Yep. Okay. I also found in the mail a invoice from Sunburst. Have you gotten anything from them? I haven't. I still have that last one that just is for their retainage. Uh, which I'm holding on to. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't get this one, but um, um, it's dated uh, October 17th, and it's a balance due for $77,000. Um, um, uh, that mean, that's their entire, have we not paid them at all? I mean, we threw uh, payments. I, <laughs> I don't really know. Um, I will scan this and send it to you if you don't have it. Yeah. And it, sh it shows a bunch of different invoices, invoice amount, balance due. I mean, it was like the 9,800, which we paid, which was the first one that included fixing the fence and or moving the fence and doing a bunch of other stuff. That was like initial. We paid that. Yeah. And then there's a whole bunch of other, and then there's a deposit, an invoice, invoice, and then there's a payment of the 9,800, and then a couple other invoices, which is, um, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I, I spoke with Pete today. He did not mention it. So I'll so, I'll talk to him again tomorrow and I'll call Laura if I need to from, from Sunburst. But I'll also scan this and send it to you because uh, yeah, that, that'd be great. He may have had, you know, his billing department may have just gone and said, 
what about this? Yeah. And but I don't think we owe them that much still. No. All right. Um, is there anything else on the schools that we need to look at tonight? Not on my end, Joe. Okay. Moving along, VHS uh, High School HVAC. Uh, Dr. Carver just emailed quickly yesterday and said that they're working on um, continuing along with the application for the grant and um, I think they were still working on a new cost estimate. Uh, what she said. Board of Education has engaged STV uh, to renew their estimate from last year. Uh, we had a meeting last week between Jen and our in-house estimator um, and uh, we've got all the updated information and what Jen and the Board of Education are, are looking for. Um, we're looking to have our first draft of that updated estimate uh, the week before Thanksgiving with the hope of giving her the finalized one the week after Thanksgiving. Okay, good. Anything more on that from anybody else? Municipal Center renovation, the GP room lobby which is complete um we had our last invoices and dealt with those so what i'd like to do is make a motion that we um take this off our agenda since it's complete second we got a couple of seconds any comments discussion etc all in favor aye aye opposed done and then the locker room renovations, which I have nothing new to report with that. As I said, I'd like to get some, uh, definitely as we move forward, get some firm numbers together for the costs on updating plans before we actually go and ask for an account. We have the 20,000 that was approved like a year and a half ago, but if we, we, we will need more than that. Once we um, get some, some information, we gotta get Park and Rec together and find out from them uh, what direction they want to go in. So that's it on that one. So I just have a question. Our next meeting is scheduled for the 20 something, 22nd, which is the day before Thanksgiving. And is that going to be an issue for people? I can't make it. I won't okay. Make it. Motion to make it November 29th. So we'd make it a special meeting on the 29th. Does that sound agreeable to people? Because I kind of, well, the other the other option is do we need to have a meeting? Are there going to be things, and I don't, Evan, I guess I would throw it to you since most of what we're working on now is the training range. Are there going to be things that we need to deal with? Um, things that we need to approve, et cetera, do you think, can you anticipate that in the next two weeks or? Yeah, I, I think that when, what, when will we have to make that decision? If we can make that decision a week from today, I think we'll, we'll know uh, based right, on sure. where Downs comes in with their new engineering decision and how this, uh, this new PM from Action Target gets onboarded. Okay. Yeah, we can do that because, um, or even a little bit later that week, because the being a special meeting, we just have to post it in advance. <laughs> but if we look at not doing the 22nd, doing the 29th, or if we don't do anything, our next meeting wouldn't be until December 13th. That would be a big chunk of time. Be well, yeah, and I think it wouldn't be fair to like a downs, you know, who's you know going to have a payment right. record they're probably going to put in and yeah. Right. So we'll check in later next week and then we'll go from there and I'll let everybody know. I withdraw my motion. Oh, oh, all right. Nobody seconded it. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I think we'll, we'll definitely, you know, I don't think we need a motion on it. We've had a discussion. We can um, check in and then uh, take it from there. I'll we'll leave that option of the 29th open at this right now. Yes. Yes, definitely. Definitely. All right. Are we good? We're good. I make motion we adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Done. Thank you.
Kathy, I'll bring in voices tomorrow. Evan, you stay in touch.